Welcome to the Maryland method of optimal longitudinal joint construction. The longitudinal joint is often the first area of distress during the long life of an asphalt pavement. The proper compaction technique can help create a long lasting joint in just three easy steps. First, the paver end gate should overlap the existing pavement one to one and a half inches. Here the end gates are one to one and a half inches overlapping the existing mat. This procedure ensures that the joint area is not starved of material. The importance of well-maintained paving equipment cannot be overlooked. Worn augers may not convey the material materials in mass to the end gate and can result in segregated material containing higher voids. It is also very important to keep the distance from the end gate to the augers no greater than 18 inches. If this occurs, segregated material may be supplied to the joint and make the first step of the construction process less likely to produce an acceptable longitudinal joint. Second, the initial pass of the compaction roller should be on the hot mat six inches to one foot from the longitudinal joint. It is that during the initial pass of the compaction, the roller is located on a freshly placed asphalt pavement six inches to one foot inside the longitudinal joint. This operation locks the new surface to the base and forces the newly placed hot material into the confined space at the joint. This increases the amount of material that will be compacted on subsequent passes. This helps develop increased density and durability. The roller on the unconfined joint overhangs the mat by about six inches achieving optimal compaction. As they approach the paver, the position of the front roller adjacent to longitudinal joint can easily be seen. Always remember a durable longitudinal joint starts with a good application of tack along the existing longitudinal joint as seen here. Third, a subsequent roller pass or passes simultaneously compacts the trap material and the overlap material sitting on top of the joint. Most often this is done with the roller in high vibratory mode applying massive compressive force to compact the newly placed asphalt. This forces the hot asphalt mixture into the smallest of voids. A good indicator of a successful application of the Maryland method is the appearance of a thin white line atop the joint. The Maryland method is as easy as one, two, and three. Let's look at the process in real time. The previously placed material is overlapped one to one and a half inches. If the one and a half inch overlap has been exceeded, bumping the mix back with just the slightest of effort may be necessary. The initial pass of the front roller is on the hot mat six inches to a foot from the longitudinal joint, locking the newly placed pavement into position and forcing material towards the joint, filling the voids. As the roller reverses direction and moves atop the joint, compacting the trap material and the overlap material with the full force of the roller, the white line indicates the process has been completed properly. Here is another project with a unique setup. The cold material to the right of the newly placed asphalt pavement is from a previous day's operation, and the still warm material to the left is from the current procedure. As the two rollers approach the paver, the one on the right stays six inches to a foot from the joint, abutting the cold material, and the one on the left stays the same distance away from the unyielding material that has been compacted earlier in the day. The cold, hard asphalt on the right and the unyielding material on the left provides the confining forces necessary to trap the newly placed asphalt and help make a solid, well-densified joints. One on the hot joint, and one on the cold joint. Let's take a look from another perspective. The marks on the mat indicate the rollers have been operating optimally, compacting the asphalt using the Maryland method. As the rollers return towards the paver, the one on the left overhangs the unconfined material, and the one on the right locks and compacts the asphalt pavement. At the drum's right edge, energy waves force material towards the joint, creating additional density. As the rollers reverse direction, they compact the mat and excess materials into the joint, optimizing the pavement's serviceable life.
that's how you create an optimal joint.